So we usually start a painting class with a little bit of a PSA. Give yourself over to the process of painting and having fun. First things first is if you want to have a big cow head or whatever, um, initially you want to plan out where that is on the canvas. So the first thing that I do a lot of times is I split my canvas into thirds. And then you have your basic thirds. And I also kind of like to have a center line. For this cow, what I think kind of is the most impactful piece and the easiest place to start is his nose. And it's kind of a simple shape that you can then modify. If you look at this painting, I'd say the nose is, the crest of the nose is probably a little bit higher than, than the center, okay? And the general shape, it kind of looks like a bell. You want to make a line in a smooth gesture. So if I have my center of canvas, I'm a little bit above. I'm going to come out and down and make that side of the bell. And I'll come from the top and down. And there's the basic nose shape. So if you can see here, at the top, there's kind of a flat, and then what looks like a little bit of a hollow 45 here, over to the side, and over to the side, it kind of gives him his ridge on his snow. So, I'm going to come here and kind of flatten this out, and then come about 45 like this, and then straighten and around. So, I'm adding just a little bit more contour. Oops. <laughs> but then I'm going to come just about in from that radius of the bell bottom and make the bottom of his mouth. Or her. And then, I mean, that kind of looks like a cow. Maybe. Now I'm going to start thinking about the rest of them. And the next easiest part I would say is his body. And you can just kind of see, it's just really simply laid in there, but it speaks how his body is. Um, it's foreshortened, so really you're not seeing the chest or anything, you're just seeing that his body kind of humps out and then comes back in. I'm gonna start about where that hump in the nose is from the 45 down, and I'm just gonna Bring it maybe a couple inches out, just so I can see that curve come out and then back in. So I'm just doing the same thing here, in, back out. The next part I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the top of each of these lines that I like, and I'm just going to come up and cap it off. Gives you a starting point. <laughs> Make him look like he has a swim cap on. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the ears about where they need to go. So from where I started that line to come up, the ear kind of comes out of there. So if you make a line out on either side, And then mine kind of comes off the canvas, so then I'm going to bring it down like this. Out and up. So his ear's kind of a two-part deal. I came down to give him that piece of the ear that flaps out, and then kind of the, the head connector piece. I don't know anatomy. And so the next part I'm going to do 
He's just kind of got like a little, in my painting at least, he's got a little flat ridge up here. And then it kind of dives in. Like 45 is kind of like if he did by his nose. Give him that little collar. So there's that flat piece. There it's going to where the horn connects, and then it's coming over the ear. And this is all just a guide. I mean, we're painting, so painting is about layers, and you can always fudge and move things around. And I'm just going to give them some little horns. All right. And now just a couple more little details. I'll go from the horn and then just kind of dive in on either side. And uh, mine has kind of an angry brow, I guess. And then you put that eye in, right underneath that brow. So I'll give you a little time to kind of work it out, but again, these are just guides. So it doesn't, this is not the final product. It's just to inform you of where to paint. All right, so I'm getting my biggest brush, which is a little bit overkill, but that's fine. And I'm gonna make my background color. So as you can see, Blue is kind of the popular color on those paintings, but you could do red, you could do purple, fully up to you. I'm going to do a light blue. The big thing when mixing paint is loading your brush up with water. For every dip into the paint, I dip into the water. Because that's what makes, uh, makes your paint move. I'm making a light blue. And the most simple principle about mixing colors is that the one with the most pigment go, is the most powerful. So if you want to have a light color, definitely start with the white and then just ease in a little bit of that other color. Otherwise, you're going to come up with a plate of paint by the time you have that light enough color you like. So I'm just going to basically go around the outside and paint the background in. But if you're going up and down the wide way, you get a nice coverage. And you can always flip it and get a sharp line. And then if you're light on the canvas, it's the sharpest line. And if you're up and down, you push in, you get a fatter line. You can just play with that thickness. The biggest thing about paintbrush selection is just, you know, how much uh, are you looking to cover? You end up using them very similarly. And if you don't paint perfectly, paint dries. One other thing that I think is a misconception among a lot of people is that when you're mixing paint colors, the way you make it lighter is to add white or a complementary color like yellow. If I was to add yellow to blue, that kind of brighten it up. But you don't want to make colors darker by adding black. It kind of sucks the life out of them. So if I want to deepen my blue, I'm going to take my dark blue off my palette. And I'm at just a touch of red. And that'll give us a darker blue. This is a little backwards, but it's what I have on my brush. So I'm going to go and start adding what are the darks on my, on my cow. When I think about it, I just think about like where is the light hitting? How do I give roundness or sharpness inside of that cow's face and it's really between what light and dark where where is the sun hitting well that's your highlight and that's your highest point around his outsides i'm going to go and i'm going to lay in just a little bit of this darker blue also 
inside his nostrils. I'm going to give that the darker blue. Okay, and I'm going to just kind of go to these insides of his ears and add a little blue. And these dark places, you can see there's kind of a ridge. The thing that I have to worry about a lot when I'm painting is being patient. Like, I want it to look nice right away. And the thing about painting is it's just one step after another. And as you're, thinking, or as you're painting, think a little bit about what your primary color you want to have is. Like, I'm, I just put the shadows in so then now what we're going to do is we're going to put that color that kind of takes up the bulk of the cow. So I'm going to go to a red. I'm just going to come in and close to that blue. So now we're kind of in the stage where we're just going from dark to light to give it some form. So if you have the red and the blue, mix those two a little bit and get a purple. If you want to have the red get a little bit lighter, you can either go to pink or to orange. If there's an area that you really, really, really don't like, leave it alone for a while. Let it dry. There's a way of painting that gets kind of a nice texture and look. It's called wet and wet or a la prima. If you're just trying to get more color in here, you can see in this one, I added just some straight white into the, into the wet red and it made pink. So you can mix colors on your canvas if you're using enough paint. I'm going to make an orangey or red and throw some of that in there to kind of lighten up. And as I'm building, I just kind of started with the orangey red and then a yellowy orange. Now I'm just grabbing yellow. When you start playing around with those lighter and darker paints, you get a little bit of texture where it almost looks like hair. Once you get to a point where you feel like you've kind of done enough and you want some paint to dry, it's always a good time to go grab a snack or crack another beer and step back too. Because stepping back and going and looking at something else for a while is really good because when you get hyper focused in on the canvas, sometimes you can't see the forest through the trees. Let it marinate a little bit. So I'm going to work on the nose a little bit, and I'm going to start with some watered down white, and I'm going to start by just getting this nose area covered with that light white. Once I get that covered, then I'm just going to grab some straight blue, and I'm going to start at the top and just work my way down. Pick up that white, wash out my brush, load up with some white, and then bring the white up a little bit. Then I'm just going to give them a little bit of a line in here. And just remember, you're kind of mixing your paint on your canvas when you get to a certain point. So if it's like, ooh, I need it a little bit lighter down at the bottom, bring some straight white in there on the bottom and bring it up. And then if you need, wash it out. Bring some blue down. And mine, I mean, mine's pretty messy, but I just kind of like that brush work. I think it makes it interesting. <laughs> oh my gosh! Do we need to talk? I feel like you're in your place. <laughs>
you start playing around with those lighter and darker paints, you get a little bit of texture where it almost looks like hair. And I'm just gonna wash my brush out a little bit and give it a hint of blue on the underside because blue is shadow. But I'm looking at my cow and I'm thinking, where are the most prominent features that I wanna hit with maybe like a little bit of white or a light yellow? What really ices the cake is just little hints of highlights and also the eyes. The eyes can really kind of bring something alive. And it's another one of those things that less is more. If, you, if the whole thing becomes a highlight, it's not a highlight anymore. So the upcoming steps are adding the highlights, putting the eyes in, and then I'm gonna go around because everything else is getting pretty nice and dry. I'm gonna put a light color around the cow to just make it pop. So mine's gonna be a blue-eyed cow. So I'm gonna make a little circle, not about a circle about half size as big as the eye I want to have. I'm gonna go around the outside of the cow with with the highlight color. And then that just pops them a little bit. <laughs> 